My name is Bill Baker. I'm a master of ceremonies here in Endicott. And we'd like to welcome you all here, all the special guests, uh, veterans, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start off with a pledge of allegiance to the flag. Attention. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Father is Andy from Our Lady of Good Counsel Church. We'll give the uh, beginning invocation. Father. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we gather this day to remember Remember our fallen comrades, our brothers and sisters, who wore the many uniforms, those who made the ultimate sacrifice in relationship to their country that they loved. Let us never forget their sacrifices and the sacrifices that are being made today in Iraq, Afghanistan each day, that we might live this life that we live in this country, a life of freedom, a life of prosperity, that we never take it for granted those who, who serve our country, that we never let happen again what happened to our young men and women who return from them, that we take pride, pride in our country, pride in those who serve our country, and completely understand the sacrifices not only they make, but their families as well. Those many wives, husbands, and sons and daughters who've lost a member of their family in serving their country. May we never forget. May we always do what God asked us to do, honor, duty, and country. In his name we pray through Christ our Lord. Bobby Dagnio will sing the national anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight and the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the whole Marty Dardis from Endicott. He's done a lot for the village. He's done a lot for uh, the nation. And uh, Bill Scanlon is going to give a special memoriam uh, for Marty Dardis. I would agree. I think we all knew Marty and were here at a place he made possible. I would say single-handedly because none of the other members of our Veterans Committee had the ability to raise money, uh, to plan, to investigate, and if it weren't for Marty, there'd still be a lawn here. He raised money, he raised 38000 for that uh, Endicott Johnson Workers Memorial, 2800 for that sign over there, the EJ Workers. 6,800 clean George F. statue, 
and 68,000 to install this memorial here. And Marty's main motivation was because none of these men on this wall who got there as a result of enemy action had a chance to do what the rest of us did to survive the war, go to college, marry, have children, grandchildren, and do all the things that all of us standing here have done. And I was reminded of it primarily because of a letter by Steve Giles, whose name is over here, won a silver star in Iwo Jima. On his way to Iwo Jima, he wrote his father the most beautiful letter I've ever written, I've ever read. It was made possible for me to see it by his uh, brother, Jimmy Swyth. And he told his father he was ready uh, religiously to die in a very beautiful way. He wrote a beautiful poem, but he also said he didn't think he wanted to go back to work at IBM and he was interested in the GI Bill and all the things that motivated Marty right there in his letter to his father. And he told his father, you'll read about it in the papers. He couldn't tell him where he was going. But his father didn't have to read about it because like the families of every other um, member that's on this wall, somebody came and personally told him. And that was the end of it until Marty came along 50 years later. And not only, he didn't just leave us with a bunch of names, which maybe we recognize, maybe we didn't, we wonder about, like most statues. But he gave you a mini biography, which is a history lesson for all these kids who come across the street. And just yesterday when I was here, a lady came in on her bicycle, and what impressed her the most, and what seems to have impressed everybody that writes about this, was the ages, 19. We were all such dummies when we were 19, I think of myself especially. And it's a perfect age to send kids off to war. Um, they don't know any better. And I guess, unfortunately in this country, we've always had a lot of people who never knew any better, and a good supply of 19-year-olds. I hope we don't have any need to add any more wars to this memorial. We've had enough. But uh, I can only say, Marty Dardis, of all of his accomplishments, which have been, his death was recognized in the Seattle newspaper, the Boston newspaper, the Minneapolis newspaper, of course, Miami Herald. But, uh, and this is just a kid from South Street in Endicott. Um, he such, was such a remarkable, brilliant man. I've gone to school with some geniuses, but never anyone like Marty who had the, the uh, integrity, the bravery, and everything it takes to do the things he did. But I still say, this is a tourist attraction here that he created. It's the only place where you can find out how these people died, and when Endicott emptied out, that they died all over the world. And uh, I think it's the greatest thing that he accomplished, far better than what he did in, in the uh, law enforcement area. Uh, this monument we're very fortunate to have, and I don't think there's anyone here who will disagree. Thank you. Oh, I want to introduce the election committee. What's left of them? We've lost about three members, John Scales, uh, and uh, at 82, you don't remember well. Uh, uh, mm, uh, um. Oh, well, Charlie Swan, uh, John Scales, and we just lost somebody else, I think. Okay, uh, Jackie Sammons. Um, Vern Carmen, Jim Taylor, uh, Rick Andell from Post 1700, one of our big contributors. Um, Betty Lane, Jim Benson, Wanda Brown, and uh, that's it. We're the last of the Mohicans. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bill.
this time I'd uh, like to recognize uh, our local government officials. Assemblywoman Donna Luparo. Endicott Mayor Joan Hickey Pultz. Endicott Trustee Val Goble. Broome County American Legion Commander Barbara Beebe. Broome County American Legion Auxiliary President Mary Smalcom. American Legion Post 82 Commander Charles Duval. And the Auxiliary President, uh, Judy Doherty. The Sunset Legion Commander, Guy Billings Sr. American Legion Post 89 Commander, Deborah Smalcom. And their Auxiliary President, Joan Mosing. Mosing. The Sunset Legion Commander, John Gilbride. American Legion Post 1700 Commander, Phil Dillenbeck. Their Auxiliary President, Sandy Denman. Sons of the Legion Commander, Gary Denman. I'm the commander of VFW Post 1449. Uh, Auxiliary President, Post 1449, Maria Trancone. And uh, the Men's Auxiliary Post 1449, Jim Kelly. Organization of Vietnam Veterans President, Bill Bilka. And Marine Corps Commandant, Ray Miller. At this time, Mayor Paltz would like to give a special presentation. First of all, welcome everyone, and thank God the rain stopped. It's so nice to see so many people. It seems every year we have more and more people. But I couldn't help but think, as Bill Scanlon was standing here, Bill Scanlon had a very, very important part in this memorial, as well as Marty Dardis. And our hats go off to Bill Scanlon. This morning, I'm very happy to present a certificate of recognition to Steve Vanick. The Mayor and Board of Trustees of the Village of Endicott are proud to present this certificate in recognition of the outstanding achievement and spirit of leadership displayed by Steve Vanick. Whereas Steve Vanick, in celebrating a very special milestone in his life, Steve is really retiring. And whereas Steve Vanick, a veteran of World War II, where he served in the United States Army, and whereas Steve Vanick has been a member of Post 82, having served as a commander, and whereas Steve Vanick is also a member of the VFW Post 1449, having also served as their commander, and whereas Steve Vanick was an original member of the Monument Committee, and for years, and still to this day, which I saw him doing on Friday, placed the flags on the memorial wall. And whereas Steve Vanick, having served for 33 years on the Parade Committee, now therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the village of Endicott, 
I do hereby deem it an honor and pleasure to proclaim this day, Monday, May 29th, 2006, Steve Vanick Day in honor of this dedicated citizen and his accomplishments. Thank you, Steve. Oh boy. Steve and I go back a long ways. He knew me when I had bright red hair. I was 16 years old and went to work at the Lyric Theater. And so he worked at the Lyric Theater as in this, the booth and what have you. And so we've known each other a good many years. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Would you like to say, oh boy. Today is a day set aside each year to pay special, special tribute to those who have through centuries given unselfishly of themselves. Those who dedicated their time to protect the freedoms that we all cherish and are so fortunate to have. Those very freedoms that we sadly and too often take for granted because we are so accustomed to having them. Such as the freedom to vote, the freedom of speech, the freedom to have a diverse beliefs, the freedom from oppression, the freedom from punishment, for having differences in religious preferences. These few examples show why freedom is so important to us and why we collectively, as a nation, continue to hold our democracy so near and dear to our hearts. Freedom is one of the many things that makes America the most desirable place in the world to live in. Freedom is the main reason that so many have sacrificed themselves in order to protect it. Today, remember why we are so fortunate to have those liberties and why those liberties are bestowed on each one of us as American citizens. Those liberties were not free. Freedom too often comes with a heavy price. The price paid to keep it and the belief that it is worth protecting. Fighting for and even dying for has been paid by our veteran men and women today. So please take a moment to reflect for we all know a man or woman who has served in some capacity for this great country so that we can continue to share in the joy of freedom. Men and women from the melting pot of this great nation, men and women who believed and still believe in the need to protect our Constitution. At this time, while I am addressing you, many of our men and women are fighting in distant places so far away from their families and loved ones in order to maintain not only our freedom from terrorism and other forms of oppression, but also in order to make the world a better and safer place. Men and women today who are stationed in alien places where they do not know the language, the customs, or the culture, where they are foreigners, but they are there for a common cause that cause to defend and protect, strengthen those peoples who are less fortunate, those who have been oppressed for centuries, who now, perhaps for the first time in their long history, are able to seek the freedoms that make our country great. Please take a few moments to remember the 1,371 Broome County men and women of past decades who fought and died in strange lands, where they too did not know the language or the customs, but knew the cause, the reason, and the importance of their missions. They were sent to protect us and to ensure that the rights of their fellow citizens would not falter. Look at the flag, old glory, it too symbolizes all of America. Each time you see the American flag, take a moment to thank those who have protected it, those who have served you and me, and not just today, but over the course of decades. Take a moment to thank them as I do today. To those of you who have served your country, thank you. Thank you for believing. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for unselfishly giving to your country to keep each one of us safe to allow us to be able to live in a nation where we have a rich tradition that continues to grow and spread across the continents. Remember those who have gallantly laid down their lives, those who lay interned in places of honor 
here in the United States, but let's not forget those who never made it back. All of these brave hearts who have died, not in vain. I would now like to ask each one of you to bow your head in a moment of silence to remember our fallen heroes. I would personally like to thank you all again who have served your country and those who are continuing to serve. Thank you for keeping our freedom safe. Thank you so much. I would just like to add that on June the 17th, the Village of Endicott will be celebrating their 100th birthday with a special parade and a lot of wonderful activities that will be following through the course of June, July, and August. And we hope that you'll all participate and join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Paul. Michael Pender from Squadron 82 and VFW Post 1449 will read the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation, so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who have fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take the increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you, Mike. We have a Memorial Day flyover right now uh, behind the high school. Catherine Vanek will sing, It's a Grand Old Flag.
Thank you, Catherine. Very good. Rick Andell from BFW Post 1449 will read General Logan's orders. Shortly after the Civil War, the then commander of the Armies of America of the United States, John H. Logan, John A. Logan, excuse me, made a proclamation to set aside a day in May as a day to remember and memorialize all those who give their lives, gave their lives for our country. This is his general order number eleven. From the headquarters of the Grand Army of the Republic. Washington, D.C., May 5th, 1868. The 30th of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but post and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized, comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among others, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors and marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure that this result than by cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes. Their soldier lives were the reveille of freedom to a race in chains and their deaths the tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of our slain defenders. <coughs> Excuse me. Let no vandalism of avarice. Excuse me. Let no wanton foot tread grudely upon such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of free and undivided and an undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull, and other hands slack, and other hearts cold in solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the warmth and light of life remains to us. Let us then, at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us, in this solemn presence, renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us, a sacred charge upon a nation's gratitude to soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. It is the purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his desperate comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to call attention to this order and lend its friendly aid in bringing it to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in a time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Department commanders will use every effort to make this order effective. By order of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief. Thank you, Rick. Uh, the Continental's Ancient Fife and Drum Corps.
Thank you very much. Continental is eighth in Fife and Drum for. Officer of the day, prepare the honor guard to fire a volley of three. Thanks, Chuck. Father Zandi from Our Lady of Good Counsel Church would give the closing benediction. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, for many of us who gather here this morning, so many of these names that are placed upon these granite walls are more than just names. They signify family members, friends whom we loved, whom we cared about, whose memory each day live within our heart. Not just on Memorial Day, but the emptiness is felt every day of the lives of those who love them. May we as a nation never forget the sacrifices that these young men and women made for our freedom. May our young people understand that freedom has a price. To live in this country, to be able to live in freedom and prosperity, always has a price. May they understand the pride, the pride that we take as Americans, the pride in our flag, the pride that we live each day being able to express our feelings and our thoughts without fear. May we never take anything for granted. May we not take these men and women for granted. May that we cherish them in our heart and we continue to pray for young men and women in harm's way that they may return to their family and loved ones and be able to live the American dream. We ask this in his name forever and ever. Thank you, Father.
Bobby Daglio will start us off on uh, God Bless America. Let's all sing along. God bless America. Concludes the ceremony over here in Endicott. Uh, we're going to uh, adjourn to the best of four corners at the gazebo where we have another ceremony. Those of you that cannot make it, uh, the Post and VFWs have open house today. So stop by if you can. Thank you very much. Sit down for a minute.